What's up guys, in this video I want to go through solving simultaneous equations when only one of the equations is going to be linear. Now initially looking at this problem, a lot of students say like, isn't this two linear equations? And no, it's not because even though the powers of each of my variables are raised up to one, that does not just make it a linear equation. See, the difference here is the relationship with x and y here is multiplication. So therefore, if you were to solve for x or for y, you're going to be dividing by an x or y on the other side. That's not going to create a linear relationship um, when that variable is isolated. So even though it can be deceiving, Sometimes it might be helpful if you want to identify, are we dealing with a linear equation or not, right? Make sure you set it equal to y. And when you set it equal to y, then you want to be able to look at the powers of the exponents. So again, in this example, we have one linear equation, then we actually have a, a reciprocal relationship over here. But again, like, how are we gonna go ahead and do this? Now again, what we're doing is we're looking for the value where these graphs are going to change. And a lot of times when we look at like linear equations, we're looking for the intersection of two lines. Right? We're looking for the x and y where the two graphs are going to change. Now, you don't need to know what exactly this graph is going to look like, but again, sometimes it is helpful to understand this reciprocal relationship as well as a linear equation. We're actually going to have this curve is going to be intersecting a line, so it's actually going to look something like this. Now, I don't know exactly what this graph looks like, and actually I already know that is not the right representation because that's going to be negative x. Therefore, it's going to have a negative slope. Regardless, what I'm trying to represent with you is there's two opportunities for this graph to be able to intersect, right? Where a line, they can only intersect at one point. But here, you could intersect something like at two points, right, for both of these um, curves here, or you could also, also have a point where it's gonna intersect twice, right? Like over here and over here. So it's important to understand that curve is going to provide us different options for what our solutions could be. Now again, how are we gonna to want to approach this value? Well, what I've you know, kind of focused on is when you're dealing with simultaneous equations and you have a variable that has a coefficient of one, look to be able to be using substitution. And that's even more important when we're not just dealing with simultaneous equations of linear equations, but we're dealing with ones that are non-linear. So in this example, that's exactly what I'm gonna to wanna to do. I'm gonna to wanna to go ahead and take my first equation and I'm just gonna go ahead and solve for x or for y. It doesn't really matter. So in this example, I'm just gonna solve for y by subtracting an x on both sides. Okay, now what I've done is I've identified that y is equal to 11 minus x. Now what I can do is I can replace my value of y for my second equation, right? You can say this is equation one, this is equation two. Now what I can do is plug this into my second equation to now go ahead and create equation number three. And now what I have done is I've now created an equation that only has x's. So now what I can do is just go ahead and distribute this x times 11 and x times a negative x to go ahead and solve for x. And now what I wanna do is you can notice that this is a quadratic equation. When you have a quadratic equation, guys, what do you wanna do? You wanna get everything over to the same side and set it equal to zero. Now, I don't wanna get the 30 over to the left-hand side. That would kinda of seem obvious, right? But this is a negative x squared. So what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna put everything over to the right-hand side. So therefore now I'm gonna have a positive x squared. And now what I need to do is be able to identify what two values do I need to multiply to give me a positive 30, right, that are gonna to add to give me a negative 11. And hopefully you recognize those two values are going to be a negative six and a negative five. So you can see that there's actually two values. We have x is equal to five as well as x is equal to six. So you can see again, we're kind of looking like this. Here's five, like in here's six, right? You could say like, oh, those are gonna be your two um, solution point or two points where the graph is actually crossing. But again, we're looking for the coordinate points, ladies and gentlemen. So what we need to do now is now go ahead and take these values of x and go and plug them into y. And thankfully, right, by actually taking equation number one and already rewriting it, solve for y, I can now just take these values and plug them in. So now what I've done is I went ahead and took my y, I plugged five in for x, and I plugged six in for x, and now you can see I have two coordinate points. When x is equal to five, y is equal to six. When x is equal to six, y is equal to five. So now I can represent these here as my coordinate points. And those are gonna be the coordinate points of the solutions. That is gonna be where the hyperbola is going to intersect my linear equation. Now that is what happens when you have a linear equation and, and a linear equation and a hyperbola. But what about when you have a linear equation and a quadratic? Do are we still gonna have to apply the same process? Well, I'll show you that in the next video.